Tonight, we're in Babbitt, where mining employees are dealing with a downturn in production due to COVID-19, which is leading to roughly 500 Cleveland Cliffs employees being laid off. Plus, this was a scene in St. Louis County this afternoon as a plane was forced to make an emergency landing on a divided highway. Plus, big news for the Iron Range. A new company is coming in to build a multi-million dollar ore processing plant near Coleraine. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Anthony Mack. Kristen is on assignment tonight. Thanks for joining us. A big blow in the small town of Babbitt. Cleveland Cliffs announced it will lay off almost 500 employees at North Shore Mining beginning this month. That includes workers at a mine in Babbitt, the processing facility in Silver Bay. We'll have much more on that with a live report from Kristen in just a couple minutes. But first, there's a new hope for the former magnetation mining site on the Iron Range. Construction is expected to start this month on a multi-million dollar ore processing plant near Coleraine. Prairie River Minerals will build the plant, which will process leftover iron ore waste tailings that can be used by steel plants. Prairie River Minerals was formed in January of 2019. The company paid almost $2 million to buy select magnetation assets in Coleraine and Keewatin out of bankruptcy. In Duluth, owners of a closed bar say someone broke in and stole $15,000 worth of food and liquor. Surveillance video from downtown's Blackwater Lounge shows a suspect apparently stealing from a back room. The owners say it happened sometime on Sunday. Police are asking anyone with information to give them a call. The bar has been closed for renovations since 2019. All right, let's check in with Dave for a quick look at the forecast. Uh, Dave, pretty sunny out there today. A little cooler than I think a lot of people would like, though. Yeah, as that low pressure system from the big snowstorm passed out of our region, colder air has been filtering in behind it, and it's been a bit of a double whammy. The trough of lower pressures has given enough lift for a couple of snow showers, and the cooler air from high pressure approaching has knocked temperatures down. In fact, they'll get pretty chilly come tomorrow morning for a few towns. Right now, let's take a look at the satellite radar map here for our region, and with the tail end of that trough in place, we are eyeing up a 20 to 30 percent chance for snow showers to continue into the evening hours here tonight and hopefully fading away by tomorrow as the high pressure settles in more firmly and makes the low and the flurries go farther to the east and, and pepper somebody else's lawn. All right, Severe Weather Awareness Week. That is coming up this week indeed, and it's been a pretty decent one so far. Yesterday we talked about watches and warnings, and this week we've been talking about, or today we've been talking about hail and thunderstorms and lightning and things like that. Well, we don't have to worry about that tomorrow. We do have to worry about a tornado drill on Thursday. From now in between, we'll shake off the flurry chance, and we'll also eye up those temperatures that could drop towards 8 above by tomorrow morning, like I mentioned. We'll show you who's going to get that coming up in a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. Still no answers tonight as to what caused yesterday's fire that destroyed three businesses in downtown Grand Marais. Fire, fire officials say the fire broke out around 1.20 at the Crooked Spoon Cafe. Flames quickly spread to two neighboring shops, White Pine North and Picnic and Pine. Those three businesses were destroyed. The Grand Marais Fire Chief says some other stores nearby also had heat damage. The state fire marshal is still on scene investigating. Today we learn the IRRRB has offered to help with demolition and cleanup. The Northland Foundation has also reached out to community leaders with information on financial resources. Cook County has gone through several recent tragedies that have hit the community rather hard. These include layoffs due to coronavirus, the sudden death of a local teen over the weekend, and now the devastating fire. The community is coming together to help those who are impacted. A GoFundMe will be set up for all three businesses and then divided equally among them. There is also another GoFundMe created by the owner of the Crooked Spoon, one of the businesses which burned. Cook County really prides itself on helping each other, being a tight-knit community, taking care of each other, and everyone in this community is supportive and wants to help. We're all feeling the effects of this triple tragedy right now. You can also donate to a relief account for any of the three businesses destroyed by the fire. They're set up at the Grand Marais State Bank. A mechanical issue forced a small plane to make an emergency landing just south of Duluth this afternoon. The plane traveling from Superior landed on Midway Road near North Cloquet Road around 2 p.m. You can see the Cessna fixed-wing single-engine plane there in the middle of the road. Authorities say nobody was hurt. The plane is registered to an address in Hermantown. Authorities say the pilot was able to repair the issue and took off just a short while later. New at 6, a Nashwalk man is fighting for his life after a motorcycle crash. 
Authorities say the 44-year-old was riding on Highway 38 just north of Grand Rapids around 7.30 last night. That's when he went off the road hitting a fence and a tree. He's being treated for life-threatening injuries at a Duluth hospital. The state patrol says he was not wearing a helmet and alcohol was a factor. Meanwhile, Duluth police want to lower the number of repeat offenders when it comes to drug and violent crimes. A $33,000 grant will help the department form a safe neighborhood task force. That team is made up of about a dozen people from different law enforcement related agencies. They'll develop a program aimed at finding ways for offenders to re-enter the community without the chance of reoffending. The task force will start to meet after the COVID-19 pandemic dies down. The stressors that can come with the pandemic can push anyone to their breaking point. Unfortunately, that stress can mean an increased risk for domestic violence as people are asked to stay at home. Tonight, CBS 3's Emma Quinn shares how one Duluth shelter is seeing a startling increase and the Duluth Police Department's response. The COVID-19 pandemic is forcing people to stay indoors, which can be traumatic for some. For victims of domestic violence, this situation can be even more traumatic as they may be forced to stay at home with an abuser. The, the trauma that folks we serve um, experience already is overwhelming to say the least. And to, to add on the additional factors of the societal stresses that come with managing a pandemic um, is unimaginable. Officials at Safe Haven, a domestic violence advocacy center in Duluth, say they've seen an increase in domestic abuse related calls. Typically they see 125 to 130 calls a month, but since mid-February their executive director Brittany Robb says they've seen an 11 percent increase. It's a little bit tough because on one hand we're really glad that they're able to contact us. We're also really nervous for our community because that means they're experiencing more instances of domestic violence. On the other hand, the Duluth Police Department says they haven't seen a large uptick in domestic abuse related calls. In fact, according to police call data, domestic abuse related calls from January 2020 to now are actually down slightly compared to the same time frame in 2019. But Police Chief Mike Tuscan says that doesn't mean it's not happening. We're experiencing uh, relationships where there was abuse involved previously. I don't necessarily believe that coronavirus, the stay-at-home orders, have been helpful. Uh, that said, we're not being called as much or about the same. For those who are seeking help, those at Safe Haven are working with victims and survivors through simple forms of communication to help them individually, but also continue support groups virtually mostly just the the technology we have at hand so we're using uh, lots of phone conversations we're doing some emailing with folks and it makes them feel like they're not alone um, and to not have that group dynamic it's hard to um, envision how they're managing that situation on their own one message safe haven and duluth police want to spread to domestic violence victims you are not alone. You are not safe in your relationships. If you're not safe at home, uh, certainly um, contact the Duluth Police Department. We certainly will work to uh, to have you be safe in your relationship, have you be safe in your environment. The Safe Haven Shelter is still open for anyone who needs an emergency place to stay. Their phone lines are also open 24-7. 23 people have been charged with violating Minnesota stay-at-home order. In many of those cases, officers added that misdemeanor charge in connection to another crime the person was stopped for. Violating an emergency order could mean 90 days in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. Minnesota stay-at-home order is in effect until May 4th. Minnesota hit another milestone in the COVID-19 pandemic. More people have applied for unemployment benefits in the last month than all of last year. Commissioner Steve Grove with the Department of Economic Development made that announcement during today's briefing. They've received more than 450,000 applications since the pandemic began. That accounts for about 14% of the state's total workforce. State leaders say they are still working on how to get benefits to people who are self-employed and don't normally qualify for unemployment. Of course, those aren't just numbers. Those are we have people who are either completely out of work or working much less than they did before. They have family to take care of and, and bills to pay and rent or mortgages to pay. And so we know that this is a really difficult time for people. Grove says they hope to have the verification process for self-employed people in place by the end of April. Benefits will be backdated. 
Back now to that big blow in the small town of Babbitt. Cleveland Cliffs announced it will lay off almost 500 employees at North Shore Mining beginning this month. That includes workers at the mine in Babbitt and the processing facility in Silver Bay. CBS 3's Kristen Vaki joins us live from Babbitt tonight. Kristen, what are community members saying about this news of the layoffs? Tony, we're at the entrance of the North Shore Mine in Babbitt, where just a few minutes ago we spoke to an employee who is heading into the mine who said those layoffs will go into effect on Saturday. Now, like many towns on the Iron Range, mining is the economy. So people we spoke to in Babbitt say it, uh, they're expecting to have these layoffs be a big impact on the local economy. With just 1,500 people in town, Babbitt is a tight-knit community. Edward Zuponsich is the owner of the only market in town, and he's been a resident of Babbitt since the early 1980s. He says in the last 24 hours, he's heard from a number of people who work at the North Shore Mine. And while people understand the economy is struggling due to COVID-19, and that's what prompted this move, he said it's still tough on those who are impacted, and it doesn't make it any easier. We are. We're the Iron Range, and that's what we do up here. We mine, and uh, so anytime a mine goes down, I'm sure it's going to have a ripple effect. Uh, that's our economy, so it does affect all of us. In total, Cliff said 470 people will be laid off until August. And today, uh, and Tony, the company is hoping at that point the economy and the steel industry will be getting back to normal, and people will be getting back to work. Yeah, Kristen, a lot of mines around our region. Is North Shore the only one dealing with layoffs like this? Well, at this point, yes. Uh, but we do know ArcelorMittal and U.S. Steel have idled plants and laid off employees at other areas across the country. We did speak to some union members from those companies who say at this point they are happy to just be working, but they are anticipating that this could eventually happen to them as well. Kristen Vaki on the Iron Range for us tonight. Thanks, Kristen. In Wisconsin, the stay-at-home order is set to expire in 10 days. The big question being asked is if it will get extended. In a one-on-one -on -one interview with CBS 3 this morning, Governor Tony Evers says he doesn't know yet if he'll extend the order past April 24th. What he is sure about is when the time does come to lift restrictions, it can't all happen overnight. Instead, Until we get a vaccine, we are going to have to be super vigilant going forward, and people have to understand that. Evers added the state must be ready for potential spikes in confirmed cases no matter when restrictions are lifted. Three local businesses are joining forces for a good cause. Lake Superior Medical Equipment, Duluth Screen Printing, and Vikra Distillery have come together to provide free fabric masks to the public. The masks were available to people who stopped by Vikra for hand sanitizer. Each person could pick up one mask with instructions on proper use while supplies lasted. Blue Screen Printing donated the graphic design and the material. Lake Superior Medical Equipment provided funding to make them, and Vikra volunteered to distribute the masks. Once the CDC recommended that everyone uh, wear face masks when they're out in the public, we knew that there was going to be a need. So we uh, tried to join forces with a couple local businesses, and, and uh, it's been really great to see other businesses um, join in. Beaker had 175 masks to hand out. They were going fast this afternoon, so Lake Superior Medical Equipment will decide if they will make more. Let's check in on the number of coronavirus cases around the area, starting in Michigan, where there are now 27,000 cases and nearly 1,800 deaths. In Wisconsin, there are 3,500 cases and 170 deaths. And in Minnesota, there are 1,700 cases and 79 deaths. Worldwide, there are now about 2 million cases and more than 460,000 recoveries. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, how the coronavirus could cause fish populations in Minnesota lakes to take a hit in the coming years. And Dave will be in with your full seven-day forecast coming up in just a bit. Watch Anthony Mann weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on Live Local CBS 3 Duluth. Keep scrolling. Order food. Skip headlines. Order shoes. Use AutoSend for flowers. Use AutoSend for birthdays. Don't go outside. Don't go outside. Don't leave the phone behind. No sink. Don't blink. Don't think. Don't ever let yourself feel this alive. Breathe. Ride. 
Duluth Stove and Fireplace offers a full line of Finleo sauna rooms, sauna heaters, and sauna accessories. Visit us online at DuluthStove.com or come see us at Duluth Stove and Fireplace at 27th Avenue West and Michigan Street and see your next sauna. Ernie Lawn Service, offering mowing, fertilizing, aerating, landscaping, and snow removal in the Duluth Superior area. Call 218-341-9860 for free estimates and visit us on Facebook. Ernie Lawn Service, unbeatable quality and service. Now hiring seasonal and full-time employees. For over 80 years, Nissan has been with you through thick and thin. And now is no different. We're offering payment options for current owners. Our service departments are here to help. And now, we're offering more help. No payments for three months, plus we'll cover your payments for up to two additional months. Or get 0% financing for up to 84 months on 13 models. This is help when you need it. It's time for the biggest sale of the year. It's time for the Toro Spring Sales Event. It's time to head to your local Toro dealer, where you can save up to $750 on select Toro Z-Masters, up to $600 on select Toro Time Cutters, and up to $500 on select Toro Grandstands and Titan HDs, plus special financing offers on brand new Toro equipment. Toro, count on it. For more info on great deals and financing offers, visit your local Toro dealer. Take on your to-do list. Right now, get a free FSKM trimmer attachment with purchase of any combi motor and one attachment. Not sold at Lowe's or the Home Depot. Always at a local steel dealer. Suddenly, it seems everything around us has been turned upside down. We need a place to turn to for answers. Dr. Jerome Adams, how soon could we have a therapeutic in the hands of our caregivers? Truth. Should we be advising people to wear masks? Great question. And to make sense of our world. We're all trying to learn something during this. Just saying thank you means so much. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell on CBS. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by St. Luke's. What a back and forth day it's been today with clouds at one moment, sunshine at another, flurries here and there, and temperatures in general much cooler than normal. So on that note, let's see what's happening around our region and take a look at temperatures and sky conditions. And frankly, everybody's coming up cooler than normal. And like I mentioned, it's a mixed bag. Some towns have sunshine like Grand Marais. Silver Bay is uh, mostly cloudy. Two Harbors is overcast. Into Wisconsin, it's a similar process. And the UP as well, sunny and waters meet but cloudier in ironwood temperatures right now are in the 20s and that like i mentioned is cooler than normal and boy is it going to be cooler than normal by tomorrow morning towns near the canadian border could slip into the single digits right now we're eyeing up 25 above at the airport in duluth with a north northwest wind going seven miles per hour and air pressure 1017 millibars that's a little bit higher than normal so that long lasting trough of lower pressure that's been bringing the clouds should be chased away by tomorrow with the advent of high pressure coming aboard. But for the here and now, we're going to continue to see back and forth sunshine and cloud until sunset, of course, and out of the clouds, a couple of snow showers. 20% chance in Minnesota, 30% chance for Wisconsin before things settle down come tomorrow. So taking a look at what's going on on the bigger picture, we see that trough line extending from the big low pressure system of just the other day, keeping the flurry chance going for at least a few more hours but tomorrow things should mellow out and ease up as higher pressure comes in from the northwest and of course that's going to help egg on the cold snap here but it should bring in sunshine and so that high it's sunshine and a brother high farther to the west should slowly increase temperatures around our region. Taking a look now at the temperatures for tonight, that process doesn't begin tonight in Minnesota. It could be as cool as 8 above for our friends in Ely, and perhaps only 12 or so are on the Masabi range. 17 east central Minnesota, 20 towards 
uh, Park Point and places alongside the lakeshore. 20% chance for the flurries in Minnesota, and it's a 30% chance as we cross the border into Wisconsin and the UP, where the range of low temps will be brisk as well, 12 to 17. West wind will be around that neck of the woods, going about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then for tomorrow, daytime high temps in Wisconsin and Michigan likely will be in the mid to upper 30s. That's cooler than normal, but the sky will be partly cloudy, so it should at least look pretty, and it'll look pretty tomorrow in Minnesota as well with that clear to partly cloudy sky and high temps that go from about 33 to maybe even 39 degrees. The hot spot will be Moose Lake and Barham. Now we eye up the extended forecast, which does show a warming trend. Right now it's chilly, but it's going to become into the 40s here by Thursday and Friday. And by Saturday, 54 with at least partial sunshine. Next rain shower chance, Tony, I don't think will be with us until Sunday. And that will mean a slight retreat in temperatures back down into the upper 40s. Looks like a whole lot of sunshine before that. And I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Coronavirus could cause fish populations in Minnesota lakes to take a hit in the coming years. The DNR canceled its 2020 egg operations. Normally, small teams collect eggs so the DNR can raise the fish, then use them to stock lakes with dropping populations. That includes here at Pike Lake. It requires people to work together closely, which they can't do, and maintain social distancing guidelines at the same time. The DNR says missing one year should not have a major impact on fish populations. Meanwhile, the FAA has announced it will award around $158 million in airport aid to 97 Minnesota airports to help respond to COVID-19. Among those receiving money is Duluth International Airport, which is expected to receive nearly $5.2 million. Coming up tonight at 10, we'll tell you how the grant will be used and what makes it different from other grants the airport has received in the past. And hey, it's restaurant week in Superior, but this time around the event has a different flavor. The city's Chamber of Commerce is encouraging everyone to support local businesses that have been hit hard by COVID-19. There's a handful of restaurants offering special curbside deals through Sunday. We have a list on our website. Coming up next in sports, how a community is rallying around the rainy Grandma's Marathon champion. Find your favorite CW shows on the Duluth CW, cable, satellite, over the air, and streaming on KDLH Duluth. CBS3 Live Cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. Right now, get a great deal on the durable Kubota RTVX. When there's work to do and a reputation to uphold, it's built to haul it all and do it all. Half-ton capabilities with attachments to get the job done right. And industry-exclusive heavy-duty features, it's North America's number one selling diesel utility vehicle. Now get the RTVX for zero down and 0% APR for 48 months or save $400. No one serves you better than with so many nourishing shades, a color change is easy. Nutrice has 77. From our darkest blacks to our lightest blondes, it nourishes while it colors, plus avocado, olive, and shea. Change a little or a lot. Nutrice, nourished hair, better color. By Garnier, naturally. Duke is a man of few words and many songs. Let freedom ring. Go country. I go down till the sun comes up. It's 102.5. Duke our goal is an environment of decency, quality, and mutual respect for all human beings and all other living creatures. It's tremendously encouraging to see all across this country the remarkable interest on an issue which is not only uh, just an issue of survival but an issue of how we survive. A small idea a world of change. Join us on April 22nd to commemorate 50 years of Earth Day. The coronavirus story continues to change, both around the world and here at home. We know you have questions and concerns. At Live Local CBS 3, our focus is to keep you informed and up to date on the evolving COVID-19 virus story. We'll continue to talk to healthcare professionals to get the information you need to know. Focused on bringing you facts, not fear. That's our promise. We're Live Local CBS 3. Local for a reason. 
At Marshall, we know that paying independent school tuition is a real commitment for families, and we want to make the Marshall experience possible for anyone who wants to attend. That's why Marshall is introducing community-centered pricing to make the Marshall experience possible for more families. We know that families have budgets, and it's our goal to work within those budgets in a way that makes sense for everybody. When we partner together, we invest in your child's future. Contact us or join us at our virtual open house on April 16th. Our goal is an environment of decency, quality, and mutual respect for all human beings and all other living creatures. It's tremendously encouraging to see all across this country the remarkable interest on an issue which is not only uh, just an issue of survival but an issue of how we survive. A small idea, a world of change. Join us on April 22nd to commemorate 50 years of Earth Day. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez on CBS3. Welcome back into sports. Well, the reigning winner, you may recognize his name, Boniface Kangen, of last year's Grandma's Marathon, is going through a bit of hardship as he is stranded here in Duluth. The Kenyan native came to Duluth in early March after dropping out of the Los Angeles Marathon due to the same injury he suffered during last year's Grandma's Marathon. And now with no races, he has no income. He's staying with the family here in Duluth. So in his time of need, family friend Brianna Archer stepped up to create create a GoFundMe page for Bones. Their goal is $10,000, the same amount as the winners pursue in the now canceled Grandma's Marathon. Bones, as they call him, has a family of six siblings back in Kenya that are also supported by his marathon running. Imagine yourself being struck, like stranded in a place where your family's miles away and you can't get to them. So I was like, something needs to change here. So I was like, hey, we should create a GoFundMe page help a guy out as he's well known across Duluth and the world in general. So I just wanted to help him out so he can help his family back home too. When we asked him if we could do this, um, he ha actually had to think about it because he told me he would rather go work for it. And I said, you're gonna work for it when you win the next Grandma's Marathon. Now, they've currently raised over $2,000. If you're interested in the cause, their GoFundMe link will be on our website, cbs3duluth.com. Or if you prefer a cash or check donation, you can drop it off at Cars Complete Auto and Repair over on Howard Nesson Road. Switching gears, hashtag 746. That was the message that read across our news feeds in Bulldog Country for the past month or so. And Scott Prunovich, he did just that. He became the sixth sixth Bulldog in UMD history to earn the Hobie Baker Award on Saturday night. The Hibbing, Minnesota native beat out North Dakota's Jordan Kawaguchi and Maine goaltender Jeremy Swayman for the honor. Scotty said following learning the news that he could not have done it without the guys around him for the past three years as a UMD defenseman. I would be, yeah, I know where uh, my teammates um, for my freshman year, having you know guys like Carson Kuhlman kind of guide me and lead me lead me and then um you know park mid time like we'll just kind of each year having such a group, good group of guys um around us at all times is something that um obviously we take pride in at umd and obviously salon tries to recruit a certain way Speaking of UMD men's hockey, the school did something pretty special yesterday, raising the number one flag on campus. The team's season was, of course, cut short just about a month ago, right at the start of the playoffs.